okay so we continue from where we ended um, so in this in this video we're just going to talk about um, how we are going to go about this one I I feel like this needed uh, this question needed its own like its own part okay so we are going to do what is called the uh, parameterization of the cave that you have so uh, the thing is that uh, for this part uh, I have to find something that like a single value for that and a single value for what for the upper limit there so this is more like my lower limit and that's my upper limit there so what it is is that um, uh, we need to express each component of the vector rt as a function of a par uh, of uh, a parameter t in this um, so meaning in this case it's more like we are saying our rt or let me say uppercase t as it as it is indicated uppercase t that's going to be equals to we have like xt okay uh, we have a y t we also have a z t there like that so now what does the xt the yt the zt mean so the xt yt and zt are just um, they are the functions of uh, of t they are just the functions of t that describe the coordinates of the curve so they describe the coordinates of the curve. So now the thing is that um, when I look at this part, I have to compare it with that for me to determine exactly what my t is. So it's more like I'm saying, okay, I have my t root 2 should be equal to what? I pick that value, which is what? A 0. That is for my x. Okay, that's for x. For the y, I do the same. I pick this part. I can say that's t root 2 is equal to what? Should be equal to 0. Zero. Then my z part, uh, we have our minus one. I mean one minus t squared should be equals to one. Should be equals to one. So this is for the lower limit. Okay. This is for the lower limit. Okay. For the upper limit, how is it going to be? So for the upper limit, we are going to say um, we are d t root two. T root two uh, should be equals to root two. That's for the x. Then for the y, we are saying our we still have the t root two, which is this part, should be equals to what uh, root two there. Then for the z part, our um, one minus t squared should be equals to what zero. So I can just use the x here, or just the y, or just the z to determine what my t is going to be. It's just going to be one and the same thing. So whatever t I find here and here, or oh wait. Uh, I mean here and here is going to be the same or perhaps this one and this one is going to be the same Or even these pairs is just going to be the same So now the thing is that I'm asking myself what should I do to this one to make it a zero? I just need to multiply it by zero meaning my t is what my t is zero Okay, so even this part here I've known that my t is what is a zero so here it won't even much it'd be much of a like it would be it not be that difficult because like you just have to it will be like one minus one then you take the t on the other side that would be t squared this is a zero so we determine that a t is what a t is zero so that tells us our lower limit is what zero so less than or equal to we said t less than or equal to we have to find the upper limit so what should i do to this part for me to get what for me to get that part it's more like you're making t the sub of the formula okay you are making t the subject of the formula of which that's just going to be what for this part it's going to be a one even this part is a one so even this part if you say uh, that would be like one is equals to t squared which is what which is still a one so meaning the upper limit is what the upper limit is a one and that's the interval that we are going to use so it's very very important that we know how to determine the interval when you're given um the lower limit and the upper limit in vector form okay so the first derivative uh the first derivative is equals to um, mm, so when we differentiate this we are going to get uh, root 2 in the i plus uh, that would be root 2 in the j uh, that would be minus 2t in the k okay then the magnitude of the first derivative of that that's going to give us um, I want to have a 2 here plus a 2 plus a 4t squared okay so now what does this become this becomes uh, this becomes 4 plus 4t squared you can simplify this that's going to be a 2 root 1 plus t squared 
okay that's the magnitude and that's the one that we need to integrate so that'd be our a is equals to we have a 2 okay so from we have found that that is from 0 to what 0 to 1 that is a uh, 1 plus t squared dt and once again we can apply the uh, trick substitution meaning our t will be equals to what our t is going to be equals to uh, 10 theta so meaning our dt is going to be equals to sec theta d theta making our l to be equals to uh, that would be 1 0 there so we're going to have um, our t we said is 1 plus our t is going to be 10 squared theta our dt is what in fact this is a squared here so that's going to be a sec squared theta d theta we know what this is this is we are now familiar with this we did a similar question in the previous video okay so we can say now our l is equals to 2 1 0 so that's going to be our sec to the third of theta d theta okay so integrating this part believe we are now familiar with this it's just going to be 2 okay then this part I'm going to get sec theta done theta plus ln of uh, sec theta plus done theta there so divide by that's supposed to be divided by 2 here but I don't think I have to put that 2 because I can just cancel out with these two that I have here okay so I'm evaluating from 0 to what 0 to 1 I know but I know that my theta is equals to tan inverse of t okay so meaning uh, my l is going to be equals to um, 1 divided by instead of sec I'm going to say cos but my my theta of the cos is uh, tan inverse of t okay multiply by uh, tan the theta is tan inverse of t okay plus ln of uh, that's 1 over uh, cos tan inverse tan inverse of t okay plus tan the theta is tan inverse of t there okay so from 0 to 1 so my L is going to be equals to so this part when you say tan inverse of 1 I don't really have to waste my time finding I mean uh, substituting is 0 because I'm still going to get a 0 anyways so we can ignore the 0 we don't need it so that would be like um, shift tan inverse of 1 so tan inverse of 1 is 45 okay so if I say cos 45 cos 45 that's give me 0 0.707106781 so I can say 1 divided by the answer that's just going to give me um, 1.414 then what about tan 45 in this case tan 45 I'm going to get a 1 so that's just going to be so I'm just replacing with 45 there because I found that tan, tan inverse of 1 is 45 so plus ln of okay so this part I found that is what it's what I have here so it's 1.414 plus so tan 45 we say this what is a 1 It's one there like that so meaning my area is going to be equals to that's 1.14 I mean 414 plus uh, so ln of uh, that's a 2.414 that gives me 0 0.81285122 so plus 1 1.144 so meaning my length My length I end up with uh, two point my L length is equals to two point three two one units and that's simply the length that we are looking for there. So um that's how you go about uh, answering a question when you're given the lower limit as well as the upper limit in the in vector form. Uh of course you just have to remember how to parameterize um a, a curve that you are given so that you have um, a universal value for the uh, lower limit as well as uh, the universal value for an upper limit
That's all in this video. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.